Hey everyone, it's Ivy. Analytical English. I'm Chris Gorski, and I'm Jennifer. Nice to meet you, Jennifer. Nice to meet you too, Chris. Karen is off on vacation. She's off having a very good time. So we're here today with our English-only article: Take a bath and relax in the forest.、Mm-hmm. And today is December twelfth, and we are on page thirty-three in your magazine. Before we begin our discussion, let's read through our article. We are all familiar with the zen-like state that comes with soaking in a hot bath, but the Japanese, who happen to be experts when it comes to soaking in hot water, have come up with yet another way to bathe our worries away. It's called shinin yoku, or forest bathing. How exactly does one bathe in the forest? No, there's no water involved. Instead, it's as simple as taking a stroll. Unlike hiking, the trail shouldn't be too steep, nor should you have any particular destination in mind. The main goal is to experience the sights, sounds, and smells of the forest with all five senses. The Japanese first developed the concept of shinyoku in the early 1980s, recognizing its potential benefits for mind, body, and soul. The Japanese government endorses forest bathing and has even designated certain forests as official shinyoku locations. Forest bathing is now catching on around the globe. With certification courses for guides, forest bathing retreats at high-end eco resorts, and even an international forest bathing day, the international medical community has taken notice, and recent studies by Western scientists have confirmed what the Japanese have been saying for decades: forest bathing has real. Measurable physical and psychological benefits. It is proven to reduce blood pressure, lower cortisol levels, and improve memory. Phytoncide, a chemical released by trees, can boost the immune system, while the green and blue hues of the forest and sky have a calming effect on the mind. The idea of shirin yoku was born before. We even had the need to unplug, but in today's world of technological distractions, where the average person spends ninety percent of his or her time indoors, it may be time for all of us to take more forest baths. So, number one, I have to say, I am not a terribly patient person.、Mm-hmm. Um, I like to go slow, and I'm. I'm respectful of other people that need to go slow,、right? but I could never sit down and take a bath myself. I feel it's a giant waste of time. A bath, like a regular I, bath in water. <laughs> I want to be clear. I take a shower every day. Okay, but, good. But it's good sitting, to know. <laughs> but sitting down in a bath for forty minutes or an hour—it's、oh, impossible. Really? It's impossible for Have me. Have you tried putting like bubbles in it, like a bubble bath? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I take a shower.、Uh-huh. I try scented to take... oils, play classical or soft music in the background. You know, light I, some candles. I do play music <laughs> when I'm in the shower,、uh, and I have to close the door because I tend to play loud, noisy rock and roll in the morning to wake myself up. It's almost like an extra cup of coffee,、right. but taking a bath, <laughs> forget about it. So, how about you, Jennifer? Are you a fan of sitting down in a bathtub and going slow? Definitely, especially after a long day at work or maybe having just finished a very stressful project. Oh my gosh, you know that. You know, it doesn't have to be forty minutes. Forty minutes is a long time in a bath. So maybe even as short as you know, ten, twenty minutes, sitting in hot water, surrounded by peace and serenity. You know, and not having my child coming and knocking on my door. <laughs> <laughs> Just ten to twenty minutes to myself. I think that is heaven. All right. Well, yeah. I, I guess especially as a mother, a little bit of peace and quiet gives you. That kind of calming, relaxing feeling that we'll actually see 
in our first sentence here. And I wonder yes. if you would agree that this is your Zen-like state. Let's take a look at our first sentence and learn about forest bathing, which actually doesn't use water. Our first sentence says, we are all familiar with the Zen-like state that comes with soaking in a hot bath. So mm-hmm. when when you talk about your Zen like state, we we were kind of discussing how we find like a, what what we think of as a Zen like state. Would you say your hot bath is your Zen time? Yes, definitely. A、uh, hot baths and maybe just、um, sometimes meditating or listening to soft music, <laughs> 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 classical music. You know, by myself in a room with no distractions. Yeah. To me, that is Zen already. <laughs> my for my Zen like state, I was saying that think of a day where you work all day long and you slept. You got only a little bit of sleep because you were busy all day. You're really tired, and finally, finally, after a long day, it's time to go to sleep. And you lay down on that bed, no phone, turn off the lights. Those first five minutes of just absolute peace feel so good. And for me, that's my Zen-like state. For me, if I'm, you know, lying down on my bed, it wouldn't be five minutes. I'm probably out in thirty seconds. Really? <laughs> so my Zen-like state will only last thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good Zen then. Yes. Let's continue with our next sentence. But、okay. the Japanese, who happen to be experts when it comes to soaking in hot water, have come up with yet another way to bathe our worries away. Hmm. So happen to means a coincidentally by chance. So the Japanese they are experts when it comes to taking hot baths or soaking in hot water. Soaking means immersing to immerse yourself in hot water. So they have come up with yet another way to bathe our worries away. Come up with means to create or devise or produce. So they have created another way. To take our worries away, to bathe means to take a bath. Bathe is the verb form, so bathe with an e at the end, and bath is a noun form with no e, so bath. A good way to remember this is to pick up your pencil and write a line over the a because this is a long a sound. Your noun would have the short a, so you can draw the little v symbol above it. Long a bathe. I like to personally have my students highlight that last e, so we remember the a consonant e phonic construction. Our next sentence says it's called shinin yoku or forest bathing. Now, this forest bathing still uses this long a sound, but because we add our ing, don't forget to cut out the e before we add ing. How exactly does one bathe in the forest? No, there is no water involved, which means no, you do not need to use water at all.、Hmm. Why? Instead, it's as simple as taking a stroll. As simple as sometimes we will hear the saying "as simple as pie" means it's very very simple. So it's as simple as taking a stroll. Stroll is like a very casual, slow walk. So, Chris, do you like to take strolls? Yes, I am a big fan of walking. And when I teach to take a stroll,、uh, I make sure to talk about stroll like the little baby car, the thing, the thing you put an infant in is called a stroller. But also, to take a stroll is also good for your health. It helps you relax. What also is good for your health? Medicine. And when we eat medicine, what verb do we use? Take medicine. So we also. Take a stroll because it's good for you. It's relaxing. Okay. In the next sentence, unlike hiking, the trail shouldn't be too steep, nor should you have any particular destination in mind. Steep means to have a very sharp incline. So it's saying that the stroll that we're taking right now for forest bathing should not be like normal hiking. So when you go on a hike. 
Uh, it's usually for exercise. You know, uh, you go to the mountains. You go up a, maybe a steep trail. Maybe doing some rock climbing. So you want to exercise. You want to sweat. You want to challenge your uh, physical strength. But here, that is not what you want to do. So the trail or the little um, the the road that you choose, it should not be steep. It should probably be closer to flat. Like a flat surface or a flat incline, and you should walk very casually, slowly, without a particular destination in mind. Means you do not have a particular location that you need to get to. You just walk aimlessly. There's a professor in Japan that studies、uh, forest bathing, and his name is Dr. Ching Lin, and he uses this word aimlessly. A I M L E S S L Y. Aimlessly. This means without a goal, and I think that's interesting because when when I go to Yaming Mountain,、mm. like the first thing you do is go up like five hundred steps. <laughs> it's so hot. It's so tiring. It is very good exercise, but it is terrible, terrible forest bathing. This is supposed to be very calming. This is not supposed to make your heart beat fast. And then. When you're in Yaming Mountain, there are usually very clear paths for you to walk, but that's not the goal of forest bathing. Just go wherever you want to go. the The word Dr. Ching Ling uses is to follow your nose. That just means、mm. wherever you want to go, just go that way: left, right, up, down. Lay down on the dirt. <laughs> Take your <laughs> shoes off. And I I think there's value in that, right? right. To, to be back part of nature. Take your shoes off and feel. The cold, wet earth on your feet,、right. and, and I think there's value in that. Right, and it sounds like your the the goal actually instead of reaching a particular、uh, destination or maybe to achieve some physical exercise goals, the what you want to he- do here is to connect with nature, is to calm your mind, your body, so so that you can hear the message that nature is trying to speak to you. I, I think that forest bathing is almost like experiencing nature, like when we were a little boy and a little girl. Right. Children lay down in the mud and pick up leaves. They touch trees and they they look at flowers really close. And somewhere at some time, we forgot how to do that. And and I think in a way that forest bathing is a little bit like remember how to love nature, like when we were children. And, and I think that's really quite lovely. Even if I don't personally enjoy the aimless walking, I do really enjoy that idea of connecting with the earth, like when we were kids, and, and getting right into it.、Mm-hmm. And that's what I was going to add. I think this sounds like a, a very interesting experience. I would love to take my son to to go and experience forest bathing. He would really enjoy it. <laughs> Just being a kid, especially the laying down in the mud, <laughs> the way, the laying down in the dirt. <laughs> He will love that. Our next sentence says the main goal is to experience the sights, sounds, and smells of the forest with all five senses. Mm-hmm. And the five senses here mean sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. Of course, and when we use our sense、uh, sense verbs, don't forget to use your adjective. It is something I hear sometimes. They'll say I feel happily. That's not correct. Usually, we use adverbs with verbs, but remember, with our body, our senses, use an adjective. I feel happy. It smells good, not smell well. Mm, right. So let's take a look at the next paragraph. The Japanese first developed the concept of shinryoku in the early 1980s. The concept means an idea. So they first designed or they created the idea of shinryoku actually not too long ago. 1980s was not that long ago. Oh, I you you you're so kind to me. I, I <laughs> Were was, you born, I was in, born in 1982? So I and kids have been mentioning I look a little old nowadays. So I、you、feel know, good that I that I look so. To, you know, as opposed to fifty a hundred years ago. Nineteen. <laughs> 80s, pretty recent. <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. the The way I like to talk about concepts is like an idea is like a baby, but the concept is the adult. So those ideas maybe aren't really ready to share with everyone yet. But when you have a concept, it's more thought out. It's more full. So we use concepts when it's a complete. Full idea, just like a baby really is not yet a full human person. It's growing and still developing. 
Okay, our next sentence. Recognizing its potential benefits for mind, body, and soul, the Japanese government endorses forest bathing and has even designated certain forests as official Shinin-yoku locations. So the Japanese government they do recognize that forest bathing has potential benefits. It has possible benefits for us, and they have endorsed forest bathing, which means they approve and they support this concept, this idea. They even. Designated, so they they specified or they assigned certain forests as official locations for Shinjuku for forest bathing. So maybe they have a map, perhaps, or they have a directory or a list telling the local residents where you can go to do forest bathing. Now there are actually forty four Shinjuku locations in Japan. Which sounds like a lot, but when you think about how big Japan is、mm-hmm. and how many mountains they have, I don't know. I, I feel that's not terribly too many, right? Like I would imagine that there should be good hiking paths everywhere in a big mountainous country, but maybe a problem is there's they're too steep. Right. right. So,、uh, to qualify for forest bathing, perhaps someone needs to go in and make sure that that area is fairly flat and doesn't have steep, steep trails. And I think the most important is that it is undisturbed, so that、um, you know there won't be people camping there or you know seeing karaoke in the middle of the park. <laughs> Right, because you know you want to be in your zen-like state. You do not want to be disturbed. <laughs> hey, I agree with you. If there's one way to pull me out of my zen-like state, is to hear some like Abe, like like singing some PTV song when I'm walking around. <laughs> that ruins my zen-like. Yeah, you are so right about that. <laughs> All right, our next sentence, please. So forest bathing is now catching on around the globe. Catching on means it has become popular. Okay, or sometimes catch on can have another meaning, which is to understand. So perhaps your friend, you know, said、um, a lot of things, and you didn't really know what he was trying to say. And finally, finally, at the end, you can say, "Oh, I finally caught on to what he was saying or what he was trying to say." Finally, at the end, I understood him. So that's I, I another that's way to say catch to, on. Yeah,、mm-hmm. it's like it's a slow, it's a slower way of going. Yeah.、Right. So when when you understand quickly, just use understand. If it's slower、mm-hmm. at first, you're We're talking, we're not getting it, and then there's a slow understanding. Then we use catch on. I, I'm、mm. with you on that. I like okay, that. Okay, great. So,、um, then it has certification courses for guides. So guides, perhaps like tour guides. Okay, so they will take. A certification course, which is a series of classes, which at the end you receive a certificate or、um, a sheet of paper that proves you have completed the course and you have achieved a certain level of expertise in that particular subject. So, wow, you know they have now certification certification courses for forced bathing guides. Okay, and now there are forced bathing retreats. Retreat is a quiet, secluded place where you can rest and relax. So now there are forced bathing retreats at high end, you know, which mean very expensive, very sophisticated eco resorts. Resorts are large hotels that have a lot of facilities for recreation that you know you can enjoy. So here. We have eco resorts, which are ecology resorts. So perhaps at these eco resorts, you are close to nature, so you have a lot of animals and trees and flowers, and even an international forest bathing day. Retreat is a verb, also where we can run away from a fight or battle. When retreat is a noun, we have a quiet place with our goal. Of relaxing and feeling calm, trying to our、uh, to achieve our zen-like state that we saw in paragraph one. The next sentence: the international medical community has taken notice. So, the medical community is a group of individuals who are qualified to practice medicine. So, they have taken notice, which means they are noticing. Wow, they have、uh, seen the results. You know that seem to be very effective. Okay, and recent studies by Western scientists have confirmed what the Japanese have been saying for decades. One decade means ten years, so decades means a series of ten years. So, what are they saying? That forced bathing has real, measurable, physical and psychological benefits. 
Measurable means it can be measured. Physical is having to do with the body, and psychological having to do with the mind. When we confirm something, we are also saying something is true. Someone said it before you; it's true, and you are saying it second, third, and fourth. We are confirming something. The next sentence: It is proven to reduce blood pressure, lower cortisol levels, and improve memory. So these are the benefits of forest bathing. So you can reduce your blood pressure, you can lower your blood pressure, lower cortisol levels. Now cortisol is very interesting, right, Chris? So what is cortisol?、Um, so we have to go back to understanding stress. So what stress do to does to your body is that it can cause your adrenal glands to release certain hormones. Okay, and one of the hormones is cortisol. So it helps your body respond to stress. Okay, however, if your body、um, produces too much cortisol, you know, f- for extended length of time. It's actually very harmful for your body, and that's what is happening to most of us today in modern times. So,、um, forest bathing, the one of the benefits is it helps you lower cortisol levels, and it helps to improve your memory. And the next sentence, phytoncide, a chemical released by trees, can boost the immune system, while the green and blue hues of the forest and sky have a calming effect on the mind. Now, phytoncide is something that we're very familiar with, especially in Chinese. So,、uh, trees release this chemical to help you relax, and in turn, it can actually help you boost or to enhance or strengthen your immune system. And blue and green hues. Hues means colors. So, the forest has a green color. And the sky has a blue color. Those two colors、um, have been scientifically proven to help calm your mind. Easily for me, one of one of my favorite things to do while walking in a forest is just to give a long, deep look into trees. I love looking into trees.、Mm-hmm. And and at the workplace, it is always always recommended to have a green plant, perhaps at your desk, <laughs> <Just stir laughs> and that's actually good for your eyes as well, <laughs> and can calm you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at paragraph three here. The idea of shirin yoku was born before we even had the need to unplug.、Mm-hmm. What is unplug? Well, unplug is when we have too much technology, things that use our batteries, thing we things we need to recharge or use electricity. When we want to unplug, it means we want to move away from this. But in today's world of technological distractions. Where the average person spends ninety percent of his or her time indoors, it may be time for all of us to take more forest baths.、Mm, sounds good. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at our multiple choice questions. I'll read the questions, and Jennifer, give us the answers here. Number one: What is the main idea of the passage? And the answer is D. Forced bathing is gaining recognition as a legitimate healthy activity. Number two, which of the following is closest in meaning to the word endorses in the second paragraph? And the answer here is B. Promotes. Number three, which of the following is not a finding of the scientific community? And the answer is B. The colors of the forest and sky can improve one's eyesight. And lastly, number four, according to the author, why might people today need forest bathing more than ever before? And the answer is A. We are spending more time inside and on electronic devices. Well, we are out of time, but we will see you again later this month for analytical English. I'm Chris Korsky, and I'm Jennifer. 